My name is Mohi Banna, Professor of General Surgery, Ain Shams Medical School. The title of my lecture is Metabolic Response to Injury. The intended learning outcomes of this lecture is that you, by the end of this lecture, be able to outline the etiological factors for systemic responses, mention the factors causing systemic responses to severe injury or major surgery, explain the mediators of the metabolic response to injury, describe the consequences of the metabolic response to injury, discuss fluid loss in the surgical patient, propose management for the deteriorating surgical patient, and apply the acquired knowledge on virtual case scenarios and clinical situations. Injury or infection leads to local and systemic responses trying to restore homeostasis. A minor injury or infection leads to a localized inflammatory response. A major injury or infection leads to a systemic inflammatory response, what we call SIRS. The host response may be limited and beneficial with a good clinical outcome or severe with remote organ damage, multiple organ failure, and a bad prognosis. The characteristic pattern occurs after all types of injury. The degree depends on the magnitude of tissue damage and is modified by medical intervention. The main etiological factors for systemic responses are major operations, major trauma, hemorrhage and fluid loss, infection, inflammation, and sepsis, major cardiovascular events, and hypoxia. Certain factors cause systemic responses to severe injury or major surgery. They include tissue trauma, fall in intravascular volume, excess in intravascular volume, local spreading inflammation or infection, systemic inflammatory response syndrome, SIRS, and sepsis, excess heat loss, pain, psychological stress, secondary effects on the blood, and starvation. The metabolic response is a complex interaction between several body systems. It includes the acute inflammatory response, the endothelium and blood vessels, afferent nerves and sympathetic activation, and the endocrine response to injury. There are certain consequences of the metabolic response to injury. They include hypovolemia, fluid conserving measures, blood flow conserving measures, increased energy metabolism and substrate cycling, changes in RBCs, synthesis, and blood coagulation. There are mediators of the acute inflammatory response. They are inflammatory cells, including macrophages and leukocytes, cytokines, interleukin-8, tumor necrosis factor alpha, interleukin-1, and interleukin-6, pro-inflammatory substances, and anti-inflammatory substances. Acute inflammatory response is associated with immune response that's mediated by signaling pathways, what we call DAMPs and PAMPs. Injury leads to formation of damage-associated molecular pathways, DAMPs, while infection leads to formation of pattern-associated molecular pathways, or PAMPs. The endothelium and blood vessels are affected Local blood flow increases due to vasodilatation, capillary permeability increases and leads to leak of fluid and albumin, and in case of leaked blood, that's hemorrhage, the coagulation cascade is activated. When it comes to the afferent nerves and sympathetic activation, local nerve endings are stimulated, and their stimulation leads to pain and sympathetic stimulation and sympathetic stimulation causes tachycardia and increased cardiac output. Sympathetic stimulation also leads to anxiety. The endocrine response to injury includes stimulation of certain endocrine glands and, and inhibition of other endocrine glands. There is stimulation of the pituitary with increased secretion of growth hormone, adrenocortical hormone, prolactin, and antidiuretic hormone. There is stimulation of the adrenal with increased secretion of adrenaline, cortisol, and aldosterone. There is stimulation of glucagon-secreting cells of the pancreas and stimulation of the renin-angiotensin system. On the other hand, there is inhibition of insulin secretion from the pancreas, 
and inhibition of testosterone, estrogen, and thyroid hormone secretion. In the surgical patient, there is fluid loss, and there are certain sources of fluid loss. They are blood loss, plasma loss, GI fluid loss, inflammatory exudate into the peritoneal cavity, such as in cases of generalized peritonitis or acute pancreatitis, septicemia, abnormal insensible blood loss that happens in cases of fever and hyperventilation. We need to intervene in these cases to save our patients. And the aim is to recognize the problem as early as possible and to correct it as rapidly and properly as possible. And the management includes optimizing the surgical patient, accurate fluid replacement, oxygenation, analgesia, managing the psychological stress and anxiety of the patient, prevention of infection, and proper surgical technique. Please be ready with your questions in the next face-to-face -face session.